Today we will discuss about the remaining part of mineral and power resources. Mineral and power resources. In our first two videos, we have discussed about the meaning and con conservation of minerals and later on conventional resources. And in this video, we will discuss about the non conventional resources. Non conventional resources. I have told you about uh, the classification of power resources. There are two types of resources. First is conventional resources and the other one is non-conventional resources. What is non-conventional resources? The resources have been re recently discovered are known as non-conventional resources and basically in non-conventional resources we can include solar energy, wind energy, Geothermal energy, biogas, and tidal energy. And after it, we will discuss about conservation of energy resources. At first, we will discuss about the sources of non-conventional energy. But the question is why do we need a non-conventional source of energy? We can see that growing consumption of energy has resulted in the country becoming increasingly dependent on fossil fuels such as coal, oil, gas. Rising prices of oil and gas and their potential shortages have raised uncertainties about the security of energy supply in future which in turn has serious repercussions on the growth of the national economy. Besides it, increasing use of fossil fuels also cause serious environmental problems. That's why we are in need of using renewable energy like solar energy, wind, tidal, biomass and energy from based materials. In non-conventional non energy resources, at first we will discuss about solar energy. Since heat and light energy can be felt via separately, solar energy trapped from the sun can be used in solar cells to produce electricity. We know that India is a tropical country and it has enormous possibilities of tapping solar energy, solar energy from sun. Can be used in solar cells to produce electricity. Many of these cells are joined into solar panels to generate power for heating and lighting purpose. It is used in solar heaters, solar cookers, solar dryers and traffic signals also. Cells joined into solar panels. To generate power for heating. Heating and, and lighting. Used in solar cookers, heaters, dryers and traffic signal also. We can also understand it uh, with a practical like uh, we can take an old car tube, inflate it, inflate it and keep it on a wooden platform. Then paint an aluminium diesel plaque from the outside and add one cup rice with two cups of water to it. Then we have to close the diesel with a lid and place the diesel in the inner circle of the tube. Now we have to place a glass frame over the tube and keep the set out in the sun. After the glass frame is placed, air can neither come in nor go out, but the sun rays coming into the closed cavity enclosed by the tube get trapped and cannot escape. 
the temperature increases slowly and cooking the rice over a few hours thus we can use solar energy in cooking solar energy also has some disadvantages and advantages like it is non polluting and inexhaustible but it is considered too much expensive and uh, it is also considered diffused source so it gets wasted the second is wind energy wind energy wind is also considered the source of energy and windmills are used for grinding grains and lifting water for a long time at present time the windmills are set up in the areas where high velocity wind blows because the high speed winds rotate the windmills which is connected to a generator to produce electricity basically these are set up in the areas of high velocity wind because the high speed wind rotate the windmills rotate the windmills and these windmills are connected to a generator to produce electricity to produce electricity basically these winds uh, these windmills are located in coastal regions and in mountain passes where strong and steady winds blow and wind farms can be found in netherland wind farms in netherland germany denmark uk usa and spain and in india we can find windmills nagarpoil in tamil nadu nagarpoil in tamil nadu as the other non conventional resources it is also non polluting and uh, it is safe and clean but it also has some disadvantages like uh, it uh, increases noise pollution and it is uh, very costly to set up windmills it also disturbs radio and tv receptions and it is considered harmful to birds also now the third one is geothermal energy heat energy which is uh, obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy energy which is energy which is obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy the temperature in the interior of the earth rises steadily as we go deeper sometimes this heat energy may surface itself in the form of hot springs and it can be used to generate power it is also used for cooking heating bathing for for several years basically we can understand it in following way where the geothermal geo thermal gradient is high high temperature or is found at shallow depth at shallow depth this heat is of this heat is absorbed by ground water by ground water and it becomes hot it, it becomes hot when it rises when it rises to the earth surface it turns into steam into and later on this steam is used to drive turbines and generate electricity this steam is used to drive turbines 
and generate electricity. Basically, it is used in cooking, heating, and bathing. World's largest geothermal power plant is established in USA, and the other geothermal power plants can be found in New Zealand, Iceland, and Central America also. Basically, in India, Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh, we can found geothermal plant in India. Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh. But geothermal energy resources also has some advantages and disadvantages. As a non-conventional resource, it is also eco-friendly and always available resource. But generally the sites which are suitable for geothermal energy are located far away from cities and uh, so costly to transport the electricity. The fourth uh, resource of non-conventional resources, the fourth source of non-conventional resource is tidal energy. Generally oceanic tides can be used to generate electricity or we can say the energy which is generated from tides the energy which is generated from tides is called tidal energy generated from tide is known as tidal energy to generate tidal energy flood cake dams are built across inlets during high tides water flows into the inlet and gets trapped when the gate is closed after the tide falls outside the flood gate the water retained by the flood gate flows back to the sea via a pipe that carries it through a power generating turbine and during the high tide the energy of the tide is used to turn the turbine which is installed in the dam to produce electricity we can understand it in following way like flood gate, flood gate dams are built across inlets during high tide, during high tide water flows into inlets and it get trapped it gets trapped when the gate is closed when the gate is closed after the tide pulls outside the flood gate the water retained by the flood the water retained by the flood gate to flow back to the sea via a pipe which has power generating turbine power generating turbine or in other words we can say during the high tide High tide, the energy of tide is used to turn a turbine to produce electricity. Basically, Russia, France, and the Gulf of Kutch in India have used tidal mill farms. Russia, France and the Gulf of Kutch in India. Tidal energy also has some merits and demerits as well as the other non-conventional resources. It is uh, inexhaustible and non-polluting but it is difficult to use and control the tidal energy and it cannot be used at all the time. Now the other sources biogas It is considered another source of non-conventional energy 
and it, uh, in biogas uh, organic waste such as dead plants and animal materials animal dung and kitchen waste can be converted into a gaseous fuel called biogas like organic waste such as dead plants and animal material animal material animal dung and kitchen waste are used to convert into biogas and this organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in biogas digesters to emit biogas and it is essentially a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide this organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in biogas digesters to emit biogas biogas is considered the mixture of methane methane and carbon dioxide the plants using cattle dung are also known as gobar gas plant in rural india and basically gobar gas plant has two benefits to the farmers the very first is in the form of energy and the other one is to improve the quality of manure biogas is considered an excellent fuel for cooking and lighting and produces huge amount of organic manure each year but it also has some disadvantages like it it is considered a cause of greenhouse effect and a limited quality of gas can be produced by biogas so these are the non conventional resources and in our previous lectures we have discussed about minerals and conventional resources also now we will discuss about the conservation of energy resources conservation of energy resources energy is a basic we all know all of us are aware that energy is a basic requirement for economic development every sector of the national economy like agriculture industry transport commercial and domestic needs inputs of energy so we have to conserve energy but how can we conserve energy we can conserve energy in following way the first is use of sustainable path path of energy development of energy development to conserve energy we should use a sustainable path of energy development promotion of energy conservation and increased use of renewable energy resources are considered the twin planks of sustainable energy and the other one is adopt a cautious approach for the use of energy resources we have to adopt a cautious approach for the judicious use of our limited energy resources for example as concerned citizens we can do our bit by using public transport system instead of individual vehicles switching of electricity when not in use we can use power saving we can use power saving devices and using non conventional sources of energy because after all uh, after all it is said that energy saved is energy produced using public transport system switching of electricity when not in use using power saving devices and non conventional source of energy after all energy saved is energy produced thus everyone should be aware about the saving of energy resources 